welcome to Synchronicity. I just got done mowing the lawn. And I, if you're a longtime listener of this show, you know I have bashed our good old friend Jordan Peterson so much for a variety of reasons. Really, let's be clear, I was projecting something for myself and blaming him. And whether it's objectively real or not out in the world isn't important. But I got to give him credit. The act of physically cleaning up or weeding or gardening or cleaning up your room, your house, your basement, whatever, really works. Uh, I think because everything is kind of like a metaphor. That's how we, we really process everything. So just the act of taking care and cleaning up in your physical space really is, it is, it's transformative. Marie Kondo knows, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, we're going to get to this episode, another solo cast in case you haven't been able to tell. Uh, there's a few concepts I want to talk about. One is tricky. At least one is tricky. Maybe tricky. I don't I shouldn't, I shouldn't just define it as tricky. And it's this idea of whatever you condemn, you become. Now, the opposite is true too, which is whatever you love, you become. So I tweeted this out. This is a, this is a Goddardism, but I've kind of tweaked it a little bit. Here it is. If you become as emotionally engaged over your ideals as you do over the things you dislike or hate, you'll ascend to the level of those ideals. And that's really how this shit works. I cannot say it more clearly than that. It's whatever you're focusing on, whatever you're seeing out in the world, that's internal stuff. So when you change the inside, it's not like this passive, like this is a good thing to do so you can be a good person. It's, although it is that, it's so you can recognize like this is how the world changes from the inside out, truthfully. So this is weird for a lot of reasons, right? This is not how we're used to reality working, or at least we may be used to this is how it works, but we're not experienced in approaching it like that. We've taken this world to be a literal place where there are world laws and everything, and we function against it, and there's an us versus them thing. And when you start flipping it and living from the other way, you start to see that it's not really that, and it gets weird, right? So I've gotten a few questions in recently, and we're not going to do a whole Q&A episode, but a lot of them, and one I experienced actually yesterday is this, it's when the doubt creeps back in. It's when these threshold guardians pop up again after you think you've slain them, but they come back from the dead like some weird demented Hades coming from the underworld to reclaim your your old body and pull you back down. And for a lot of people, this has to do with money. It can have to do with health. It can have to do with relationships. But money seems to be a really big one. And the only thing I can say is this is, when you plant your seed, so when you do your imaginal act, right, and you click it in and it feels right, you, you, and you recognize it, all of those th things happen, you have to kind of let it go. But you don't let it go completely. You kind of carry it around. Neville Goddard describes it as carrying it around like a fragrance, like a light smell that you can smell everywhere in the air, but it's not like right in your face, like some stinky thing that you can't stop focusing on. It wants to be very light. It's like when you have this inner knowingness and the things have unfolded the way you knew they would, you want to be able to extend that to every single aspect of your life. So we spoke a little bit in the previous episode about using inner talk and how to essentially do that, you know, to change your external reality, you catch yourself. It's kind of like an active mindfulness exercise, really. But I want to talk a little bit more about the difference between the individuated sense of I, so in my case, the Noah, and the I am, this unconditioned awareness, which we'll call God or source or Jesus Christ, if you recognize it and wake up to it. Um, I want to talk about the two differences between these. We can also refer to them if you're kind of neurologically or psychoanalytically or psychologically inclined as the conscious and the subconscious or the conscious and the unconscious. It's the same shit. It doesn't matter. You can talk about this in Vedic terms and Buddhist terms and science terms, all the same thing. But let's talk about it a little bit from the perspective of the conscious and the subconscious, right? So, and just to be clear, this happened to me, man, 20, oh no, 18 years ago when I first got to college, I took mushrooms once and I was like, I think I'm talking to my subconscious. And I came up with this melody for a song and it's still like one of the best things. I'm really excited to share it and put it out in the world. But it was like, where did that come from? I was like, that was weird. I think it was my subconscious. So let's talk about the differences between these two things, right? So your conscious is 
aware and it's personally, it's personal and it's selective. So I think of something, I want it, I know that I'm consciously aware of it. We're all familiar with that. You're listening with your conscious mind and your unconscious, but and subconscious, but which I'm referring in them as the same thing. I don't want to be confusing there. Subconscious and unconscious, I will use interchangeably here. Uh, but your conscious mind, you're aware of. Your subconscious is impersonal and non selective. And if you want to think of selective and non selective in another way, think of it like duality and non duality, or morality and beyond morality. And this is where shit gets a little weird because, like, beyond morality, like evil things, what bad things? Oh, gosh. It's like, well, yeah, your unconscious is impersonal. It doesn't look at things like good or bad. It says this is creative destructor, right? It's these things. And it's it's just a principle that exists. Don't freak out about it. It's fine. It's like a playground. Just we're good. Just don't worry about it. Like we're good. But uh, that is what's going on. Also, there is the effect is the conscious, right? The cause is the unconscious. Now, this is weird. This is not how we perceive things. We think we do something in this world and therefore something happens. If I'm thirsty, I pick up the glass of water and then I drink it. But what I'm missing there is I have the thought or the internal idea to pick up the glass of the water and drink it. So therefore, it's actually the cause. The conscious is the effect. And now we'll go into the masculine and the feminine, right? So the masculine or male is the conscious. It's being awake, right? It's our conscious mind of what's going on, being awake in the sense of real uh, waking life right now, right? Not like really awake, man. Not like awake, awake, man. The subconscious or unconscious is feminine or female, right? What do I mean by that? Do I think it's like a woman and a man? Maybe if I want to personify it. But what I'm really talking about is the conscious delivers ideas or gives ideas to the subconscious slash unconscious and the unconscious receives them and then births them back into the conscious world. This is literally how things work. So let's talk a little bit now about desires and what are they? Where do they come from? Why are they not bad? Why are they actually good? Why are things okay when we think things that are like, oh my God, that's a weird desire? Well, what's going on is all desires are from a deeper level of ourselves that are asking us to fulfill something or notice something or answer the call. And the reason it's okay is because this is helping us get to a point where we can be the best version of ourselves. And you could say, Noah, how do you know that? Like, what if someone wanted to kill someone, right? And that's what their desire is. Neville Goddard addresses this, and I love the way he puts it. He says, no one really wants to kill someone. What they desire is to be free of that person. They don't want that person around them. If they're bothering so much, they're such an annoyance, there's some horrible thing that they, they think the only solution is to kill them. It's a misapprehension. It's a misperception. So no one really actually wants to do a fucked up thing. They just don't know they can handle it a different way. But the desires are there to wake you up to what you really want to be fulfilled, right? And that could be a long journey and you could desire things that maybe are unproductive for you in this life at various times, just objectively or relatively, but ultimately they're all meant to lead you to this conclusion that you're you, but you're also God. I know it's fucking weird. It sounds crazy. And you can also believe in all the external gods and goddesses and modalities and anything you want because stable imaginal acts create reality. So it's all real, right? It's just the perfect fucking formula. People want a theory of everything. This is it. It's still cool to do all the individual stuff and pursue them. That's the fun part. This is, we come here for so many fun reasons. Like, let's talk about a really fun thing you get to do as a human being is you get to experience all these new things to you. We've forgotten, kind of like men in blacked ourselves, forgotten so much awesome shit that when you rediscover it and start applying it in this world, it's amazing. And also, just to be clear, like, I was having this conversation with a friend who came over and we were talking about like incarnating and taking bodies. And he's like, you know, like these other beings, like, you know, they, they, they don't, they don't come here and like, you know, they're smarter and like, you know, it's like, they don't have to do this. And I was like, no way, man, they're just pussies. They're just big old babies. You know, <laughs> they just, they can't handle it. They can't deal with suffering and death and grief. Oh, you can't handle that shit. This is why we came here to experience this, to wake us up to it so we can alleviate it out in the world, first in ourselves, 
And then it's just a game. I know it seems super serious if you're in the throes of grief, if you're bearing witness to the immense suffering in the world. Holy shit. Holy shit. There's some fucked up things going on. But change your insides first. See what happens. Start with material things if that's what you need to feel better or you think you need to feel better. Whatever it is, just start stabilizing yourself. It's all good. It's okay. Use an ethical framework, of course, right? Use the golden rule. Don't use this lovingly, right? Like I said, the unconscious, the I am, the unconditioned awareness, it's impersonal. You don't have to use it lovingly, but use it lovingly because of the law of reversibility, if no other reason, which means, again, to cover it, that if you wish something, imagine something for someone, and they are not capable of imagining that or wishing it for themselves or another person, it will bounce back and hit you. So don't do bad things. Don't imagine bad things. It'll come back. And another question just occurred to me is someone hit me up on Twitter and was like, hey, if I imagine a bear attacking me, am I going to get attacked by a bear? And I was like, maybe because that is kind of how it works. But no, because like you're probably not feeling and imagining with purpose that you want to be attacked by a bear. You know, like it's just thought you don't have the negative shit. Don't worry about it so much. Right. Beauty for ashes, joy for mourning. That's a, what is it? Like Matthew, it's some Bible thing. <laughs> I got Bible quotes now. What the fuck? But anyway, um, what's really going on here is we're eternal, right? The aspect of us, the aspect of you that can hear in my voice something, that's eternal. And what we're dreaming of, non-eternal dream, right? We're dreaming that we're limited because it's a fun game to play. It's a cool thing to do if you're omnipotent and omnipresent is fracture off into all these different consciousness and then wake yourself up one at a time. It's like badass. It's like a cool-ass fucking thing to do. So wake up to it. Live your badass life. And it could be anything you imagine. Just, you know, you have to really believe it. That's the truth. You live from the state, right? You, you understand that this is not something you're thinking of and hoping and wishing. You don't pray to an external God, right? Again, the test. If I say God, if I say universe, if I say world, if I say anything, you think of anything but you, you fucking failed the test. Sorry. Try again. It's you. It's always been you. It's easy to prove when you empirically test it. That's the wonderful thing about this stuff is you don't have to be woo. I mean, it's woo as fuck. Don't get me wrong. It's super duper 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 woo. But it doesn't have to be. Empirically test these techniques. Use them. Try them. See if they work. Prove me wrong. Fucking prove me wrong think this is an ego trip for me, prove me wrong. I don't gain anything by being right, but you lose something by not attempting it because you think I'm wrong, right? That's the way I'll put that. And it definitely also just fucking works. I don't know how else to say it, but it does. So that's it. I don't even remember what the original intent of what this was. Oh, love and hate. I see I wrote it down. Yeah. Just love shit and you become it. If you hate shit, you become it. It doesn't mean, I think I've spoken about this, it doesn't mean if you hate Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein, you become a pedophile who kills himself. But it means the quality that you despise in him that led him to do that, it builds in you. It's, it's, it's like a contaminating force. So you can look at someone like him or Donald Trump or Hitler and be like, yo, man, you know what? I feel bad for that person. And I hope when they figure it out, you know, it's, they can handle it and I know they will. But there, you know, there's obviously some wounding there. And if this was a family member or a loved one or a child or a friend and you saw them going through and you just saw them fucking up, you would have compassion for them too. And it's not that we forgive and just let them fuck over other people, but it's still you. It's always you. Change your shit first. That's what I'm trying to say, right? We have a tendency to project outwards and take this world as a real place. It is real. You have to be here. Hold tight to your responsibilities, please. But it's also not. It's also the effect. The cause is internal. It's imaginal. It's pretty fucking amazing. Tarot readings are not free anymore because you know what? Like 20, 30 of you hit me up and I learned the tarot pretty fucking quickly. I'll tell you that (laughs) when you're doing that many readings a day. Um, So I am charging now. I'm charging a nominal fee. This is just to gate people who are freeloaders and I'll do free ones if you're nice, but don't ask me to do free ones, please. Uh, there's just something about a money exchange here that I think is important. So I'm going to do it. It's going to be super cheap. It's going to be 13 bucks. I like the number 13. And I've been doing email reading. So I'll 
on Instagram, you'll hit me up. I'll take a picture of the spread. I'll send the email reading to you that way. That's 13 bucks. If you want to do it another way, if you want to get on the phone with me and talk about some other shit, astrology, we can do that too. I just don't have a pricing structure for it. Those will be free. How about that? Boom. That's how we start things. We beta test them. If you want to do a talk, a Zoom chat, hit me up for those and we'll schedule those. Um, and those will be free for a short time. Limited spaces, as you can understand. I got a lot of shit going on, guys. But I do want to make it available because I'm just trying to bone up and get better as like an intuitive and letting people know that everything's okay. We're good. No matter what the cards say, no matter what your chart says, you're your natal chart and you're the fucking zodiac. Don't forget it. You're the individual spread that you get and you're the whole fucking deck. Don't forget it. That's it. Rate and review this podcast. Happy imagining. I will see you soon. Guess. Oh, you have no idea. You have no idea, but it's going to be fun. Okay. Okay.